Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News, broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Fires continue to break out along the Israeli side of the border with Gaza as a result of incendiary kites and balloons that are flown out of the Palestinian enclave into Israeli territory, causing extensive damage of more than 2,250 acres of both farmlands and forests. The Israeli Air Force completed a week-long military exercise simulating a two-front aerial campaign on Israel's northern and southern frontiers, with Israeli fighter jets destroying hundreds of simulated targets. Russian President Vladimir Putin at an annual televised Q&A call-in session underscored his country was not planning to withdraw from Syria for the time being, vowing to preserve Russia's military presence in Israel's war-torn neighbor for as long as it remains in Moscow's interests. Fires continue to break out along the Israeli side of the border with Gaza as a result of incendiary kites and balloons that are flown out of the Palestinian enclave into Israeli territory. In most cases, the fires were brought under control, yet authorities revealed that thus far the blazes caused extensive damage of more than 2,250 acres of both farmlands and forests. As part of the Israeli military's efforts to thwart incendiary kites and balloons from crossing into Israel, the IDF has drafted in civilian drone enthusiasts as army reservists, instructing them to fly the remote control aircraft into the kites. באופן הזה אנחנו מצליחים למנוע המון שרפות. אני לא אגזים אם אומר שיש לנו סדר גודל של 500 הצלחות בכל האירועים האלו, וכל אחד מהעפיפונים או הבלונים שהצלחנו לירד עד כה, בהכרח מנעו נזק נוסף. אז המענה להבנתנו הוא טוב, הוא לא הרמטי, ואנחנו ממשיכים למצוא פתרונות טובים על מנת שהמענה יהיה מלא, ושניתן שקט לחקלאים פה, שיעשו את העבודה שלהם כמו שצריך. While the use of the drones was reported as a success, the IDF noted that the timely location of the kites was the main obstacle to avert their infiltration into Israeli fields. I can say that the solution is good, and in most cases, when we are getting the fifths and the balloons at the time, we are able to get rid of them. The problem is that we don't always get rid of them at the time, and from there is the main problem. Israeli security officials anticipated an uptick in the number of incendiary kites and balloons that are sent over the border in the coming few days in response to the directives given by the different Islamist organizations in the Gaza Strip. Meanwhile, as part of its efforts to avert a possible escalation in violence, Israel has refrained in the past several days from attacking Hamas targets in response to the use of incendiary kites, while Israeli military officials pointed out to a drop in the number of border incidents and the fact that there has been no rocket fire out of Gaza as well. That said, a defense official told TV7 that if the use of kites and balloons for the purpose of terrorizing Israel's southern communities will continue, the IDF will have no other choice but to respond with all of the tools in its disposal to assure the security of the Jewish state. Now to another matter, the Israeli Air Force completed a week-long military exercise simulating a two-front aerial campaign on Israel's northern and southern frontiers, with Israeli fighter jets destroying hundreds of simulated targets. The drill was intended to sharpen the Israeli Air Force preparedness for war scenarios on more than one front, amid heightened tension between Israel and the Islamist organizations in Gaza, as well as Iran and its proxies in Syria and Lebanon. The IDF spokesperson unit said that hundreds of fighter jets and helicopters participated in the drill, simulating airstrikes on hundreds of targets simultaneously, while providing cover to the IDF's ground forces. A senior Air Force commander who participated in the drill told TV7 that during the exercise they successfully dealt with all of the challenges presented, providing the commanding echelons with confidence as the conclusion clearly indicates the highest level of preparedness for any mission that may be required to assure the security of the State of Israel. Now, in other news, ahead of returning to Israel, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu leveled a warning to Syrian President Bashar Assad, saying that if he fires at Israel, the IDF will destroy his forces. Netanyahu once again reiterated during a Q&A discussion at the Policy Exchange Institute in London that Israel would not allow Iran to entrench itself in Syria and will act with resolve to thwart Tehran's efforts to do so. 
We have to recognize that we are not going to let Iran entrench themselves in Syria in order to achieve their declared goal. When I say declared, the ruler of Iran declared it and again three days ago to destroy Israel. So they want to stockpile weapons, uh, lethal weapons in Syria to be able to fire rockets at all of Israel. And uh, we're not going to sit there and wait for that to happen. So we're taking action against that. So we'll, we'll continue to do that. I, I think if we've learned anything from history, including British history, is you don't let, you don't accommodate um, an aggressive regime that is taking territory, uh, is building up armaments with the view of uh, conquering you. You take action against them early on. Bad things should be opposed at their beginnings, not after they become horrendously dangerous. When Iran fired missiles at us from Syria and we took action against Iran, the European position actually was very supportive, and I appreciate that. And I think it makes sense. It's also something that is shared, this uh, opposition to Iran's aggression throughout the Middle East is shared by us and just about all the Arab states. So, you know, when, when Arabs and Israelis agree on something, you know, it's worth paying attention because we must know something. Uh, and we do know that Iran has to be opposed for the future of peace and stability and security in our region. Meanwhile, in Moscow, Russian President Vladimir Putin at an annual televised Q&A call-in session underscored his country was not planning to withdraw from Syria for the time being, vowing to preserve Russia's military presence in Israel's war-torn neighbor for as long as it remains in Moscow's interests. И при необходимости достаточно быстро, без всяких материальных потерь, можем вывести всех наших военнослужащих. The Kremlin first launched airstrikes in Syria in September of 2015, in Russia's biggest Middle East intervention in decades, turning the tide of the conflict in President Bashar Assad's favor. During December of last year, President Putin traveled to Syria to evaluate the situation on the ground, during which he declared Russia's mission accomplished, ordering a significant part of his forces to start withdrawing. Nevertheless, no significant Russian withdrawal has been apparent. According to a senior Russian official, the reason behind the delayed withdrawal was primarily the growing tension with the United States, France and Britain that had launched an airstrike against Assad's military installations in response to the regime's alleged use of chemical weapons. Another cited reason was the growing danger of a conflagration between Israel and the Islamic Republic's revolutionary guards in Syria that could endanger the survival of the Assad regime, a reality Moscow seeks to avoid. Thank you for joining us. You can also watch us at tv7israelnews.com or at tv7.fi. For any updates from Israel and its region, visit our Facebook page at TV7 Israel News. For any comments, please send your emails to israelnews at tv7.fi. Keep praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Yair Pinto. Have a good evening. Shabbat Shalom. And we will see you again on Monday at the same time.